Hi, Caleb with Brownhouse here. And in today's tech tip, we're gonna be going over how to install pistol sights. And this one is a little bit different. Now there are a lot of tools out there. Uh, we may have covered it before on how to you know, do it using tools. But today I wanna to go over how to do it manually. The old school method, using a hammer and a punch. And the reason I wanna do this is because you may not always be able to use the tool. A lot of suppressor height sights uh, don't really allow you to use all of the tools out there. And honestly, uh, there were, have been a lot of cases where I was working in a gunsmith shop, have been in the middle of a job, and a customer came in uh, for a quick site install, and it was oftentimes just faster for me to not use the tool, set up everything, and just to install the sites manually. Now, if you get good enough at it, honestly, it is faster. Uh, but uh, in most cases, for the novice, if you have the tool on hand, definitely use the tool. But if you can't use it, this video is gonna show you how to do it without the tool. So uh, enough of that, enough of the rambling. Well, let's get started. So first things first, we have our handgun of choice here. Uh, this is a standard M&P, and of course we're gonna make sure it is indeed unloaded. And we're just gonna go ahead and remove this slide. All right, and with the slide off, barrel, recoil, assembly, all that stuff out, we can now go ahead and get everything ready. So of course we are indeed gonna need a vise to do this. Can't do it without it. And I'm gonna go ahead and take some padded vise jaws here and go ahead and insert them in. I'm gonna start with my rear sight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the rear sight so it is in the center line of the actual vice jaws. I don't want it hanging off in the back or you know too close to the front here. Having it in the center is gonna make sure I'm transferring the maximum amount of energy actually into the sight. This is gonna make the job a whole lot easier. And of course you want it sitting just above the jaw so that you don't actually drive the sight into your vice jaws, because that's just ex extremely you know, counterintuitive to everything we're doing here. It's just not good, so don't do that. All right, so with this nice and tight in here, all right, so now we need to talk about this particular site. So on this M&P, uh, the Smith & Wesson M&P uses a set screw in the rear sight. So, we need to uh, loosen that set screw first. Not all handgun sights use a set screw. If yours doesn't have a set screw, obviously you can skip this step. But I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen that set screw. All right, now we can move on from there. All right, so now we're gonna need to talk about punches. There's a lot of different punches and a lot of different preferences here. Uh, one I wanna talk about real quick here is uh, Brownell sells these dovetail punches. These are made specifically to fit in handgun sight dovetails, but these are specifically for the 1911 Novak sight cut dovetails. So these are not gonna fit perfectly with the ones on this handgun. If you have a 1911 you know, Novak sight cut, these are gonna fit perfectly in that. Definitely use these for that. Uh, you can, however, modify these to fit whatever handgun you're working on. Uh, just know that if you get these, you will have to modify them. But I like to just get the smallest one, and you can use these. Uh, if you get the smallest one, you can use them on most sites without modifying them. Uh, so I'm going to be using this smaller one for my rear sight here. And obviously, I do like to use brass. Aluminum works really well, too. Uh, if you can get away with it, polymer uh, works really well if, it, uh, if your sights aren't in there too tight. Um, but most of the time you're gonna to need to use either brass or aluminum because polymer just isn't gonna transfer enough energy in most cases. So with that being said, don't use steel. Steel's gonna end up damaging your sights. Uh, so, I mean, if I would say if you're one of those guys that just doesn't care about what your sight looks like, you should care, just don't use steel, okay? Use something softer. Uh, the only time you should be using steel is on the actual hammer itself. Use a steel hammer you're gonna need that little bit of extra oomph to actually get this stuff to move here. All right, and uh, safety glasses. So we're gonna be 
hitting stuff with a hammer, so safety first. Eyeballs do not grow back. Not on humans anyways. I don't know if there's any other creatures that they do. I, I, I don't know. Not a scientist and whatnot. All right, so for best uh, vice practices here, we want to actually, if, if you can, whenever you're hammering on your vice, you want to be hitting into the actual vice body itself, not the actual jaw. Not a huge deal if you can't, uh, but if whenever you can, uh, hit into the actual vice body, like I'm going to do here. So what I'm going to do is position the flat of my punch. And if you're using a rounded punch, that's okay. You're just going to follow the same process here. Put it against the bottom of the slide, and I'll show you on this side here. And then I'm going to kind of repeat the process here. So I'm just going to take the flat, insert it on the bottom. Make sure everything's pushing flush. I'm going to apply pressure against here as I hit it with the hammer, right? So I'm going to hit like that. So I'm going to do it on this side and you guys will be able to see it move here as we go. And I'm just going to give it a good tap here. All right, so this one, this one's in here pretty tight. I'm actually kind of glad this happened for this video so you guys can see kind of like a, a worst case scenario with a, a really tight sight. So in this particular scenario, we need to get even more energy into this sight somehow without just absolutely destroying our tool. So what's basically sucking up energy and preventing us from actually getting this sight out right now? And these vice jaws, these padded jaws in here, uh, that's actually dampening a good bit of that blow. So let's go ahead and remove these padded vice jaws and go from there. And what we can do, we're, we're gonna put something in between the vice jaw or the, the actual steel jaw and the handgun slide to protect it. Uh, and then we're gonna continue the process from there. All right, so I removed those padded vice jaws and then I basically am just using a um, thick piece of paper, essentially like a business card to put in between the steel of the uh, vise and the steel of the pistol slide. And from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue what I was doing before, knocking out that rear sight. All right, and that is our rear sight. That one was pretty stubborn, um, but we were able to get it out without damaging anything, which is the goal here. So now we can move on to the front sight. And for the front sight, I'm not even gonna bother going back to the uh, padded vice jaws since I have this set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on as I am. Same exact process here, put it in the middle. And I'm gonna get it as low as possible, but still have it set above here. There we go. Now this is a spot where you're gonna hear a few different opinions. Uh, some people say you got to get into the dovetail and push from the bottom. You'll hear some people say, no, it's okay, you can push the blade. I'll say whenever possible, push the actual bottom of the dovetail out. And some of the, the larger, thicker sights, you can get away with pushing the blade, that's no problem. This front sight here is a tritium front sight. We want to keep all the impact off of that blade as much as we can. So. The front sight tool we were using here is too big for this actual dovetail here at the bottom. So we're gonna use our rounded tool. We're gonna come in 
and we're just gonna push it out the same way. And I'll show you on this side here the setup. So I'm just gonna come in from the bottom of that dovetail there. And I'm just gonna hit it straight out, but I'm gonna do it on the opposite side. So you'll be able to see here. And another point I wanna make here before I start hitting, these brass tools, you can see this one's pretty dinged up and the one I was using last time is pretty dinged up just after pushing out that hard rear sight there. Uh, that's, they're, they're gonna get that way, that's perfectly normal. Uh, that's what you also buy files for. You can clean these up, no big deal. So uh, you're gonna have to clean them up over time. That's perfectly normal. And there's our front sight. All right, so now we can go ahead and start uh, talking about putting in new sights now that we have the old sights out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this slide out of here. And since we are using a Smith & Wesson M&P slide, I wanna kinda show you something here. So your striker safety plunger underneath here, or on the actual slide here, is let me get this piece back on here before I show you this here. I promise I've done this before. All right. So it does sit under the rear sight on your Smith & Wesson M&P. So that's something you kind of got to be careful with. Uh, most other handguns, you don't really have to worry about that. But on this gun, we do have to worry about that. So just be mindful of that when we're putting things back together. Now, we're going to start with a rear sight here. And... I'm gonna kinda of show you how to fit it here before I put it in because whenever you get new sights to put on your handgun, most of the time they will have to be fitted somewhat. You can't just pull them out the new packaging, throw them in there and expect them to go because most of the time you're gonna have a really hard time putting them in uh, if you don't do any fitting at all to them. So what I like to do to fit them, first thing I'll do is check them and I'll check them by hand. I'll just take them in the dovetail here and I'll push them in and what I'm looking for at this point I want them to slide in a quarter of a way into that dovetail by hand if I can't push them in a quarter of the way by hand then from there I know okay I need to fit these so what do I do to fit them I don't use a file or anything like that I just use a stone with a little bit of oil. So I got my stone here and I got a little bit of oil, whichever oil you want to use. Doesn't matter, just a thin gun oil works just fine. All right, so what I'm going to do is just reduce the bottom, uh, remove material from the bottom because it, the dovetail is a triangle. So if you remove material from the bottom, you're also reducing the width of it because Apparently that's how triangles work. All right, so we're just gonna do that a bit. All right. And then at this point, you would be a little bit better prepared than I, and you would have a rag to wipe this off with. But we are gonna clean that there. And, uh, oh, look, I do have a rag, so. All right, so you can see now the bottom is nice and shiny. And that goes in about a quarter of the way, so that's all we need to do. If again you checked it and it didn't go in about a quarter of the way, uh, you would just simply repeat that process until it did. So that uh, is all there is to that. From here, we're simply just gonna go back into our vise using our pads here. And as I mentioned before, this one does have this uh, striker safety. So I'm actually gonna come in from the side that that's on 
so that I can capture that first and not have to worry about it. And I am going to be hitting into the actual vice draw itself, but since we fitted this, we're not going to be hitting it too hard, so we'll be good to go here, guys. All right. You'll be able to see what I'm doing as well. So what we'll do is we'll just take our larger punch here and give it a tap. And if, it, if at any point you're doing this and you're hitting it, it's going nice and smooth and it just stops and you can't get it to move any further, uh, don't just start beating it harder and harder and harder. Uh, back off, figure out why it stopped, if there's a burr that pulled up or something like that. Because if you just start beating it harder, uh, you're probably going to damage something. So figure out why it stopped, address the issue from there, and then keep going. Uh, don't just... Uh, don't just try and muscle it in. All right, so we're looking pretty good. At this point right here, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure, I'll pull this out so you can see. You want to make sure you have equal sp an equal gap right here on that leftover dovetail and right here. And that's that'll tell you that the actual site is centered in the dovetail. And what I like to do is eyeball it and then you can take a caliper and measure the actual distance itself. Um, however you want to go about doing it. And then go from there. So right here. We'll just say, you know, that, that looks pretty dang centered. So this one is done. All right, so now we can move on to the front sight. And, oh, this is an M&P, so we do have that set screw right there, uh, which we will tighten down real quick. All right. Okay, now we can move on to the front sight. And the front sight... The process for that is completely different. I'm just kidding, it's exactly the same, so we'll go ahead and do it. All right, have our front sight here. We'll do that fitment check I mentioned earlier. Take it to the stone. Goes in about a quarter of the way, awesome. All right, and both sites are now in, but we are not done yet because uh, although both sites are in, we were using a brass punch. When you hit something with a brass punch, especially steel, it gets brass all over the place, and uh, it doesn't look very clean right now, and we want our work to look clean. So what I like to do, uh, you can use a lot of different things for this. You can use... Um, the Birchwood KC Brass Black. Uh, you can even use the Aluminum Black. Um, I, for this, I'm gonna use the Brownells Dicropan T4 Touch-Up. And I know this is made for steel. Aluminum Black is obviously made for aluminum. But this is such a small layer, such a light layer of brass. It's still gonna react with it in a, a very small way. And since it's such a light layer, it's just gonna pull it right up. It'll still work. 
Obviously for larger brass things, it, it doesn't work at all, but for this it'll work just fine. And uh, just remember, don't drink this. And just scrub it. It's gonna take a second for the chemical reaction to actually happen. Have your rag handy. Don't let it sit too long on your steel here. Even though this is stainless steel. And there you go, you see the brass is completely gone. Just do the same exact thing on every brass mark you see. And this one on the front here, I don't know if you can see it real good. I'm gonna get it so you can see it. This will be a good example. So if you see the see that brass streak right there. All right, we'll go ahead and scrub that up. All right, and then throw a little bit of oil on there. Everywhere you got the uh, cold blue. And there you have it. Good as new. Okay, uh, from here you can just go ahead and put your handgun back together. I'm not uh, really gonna go through that because that will vary depending on what handgun you're doing. So no need to go through that here. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. Uh, if you haven't already and you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.